flights will resume as soon as possible. One of the issues remains a difficult and dangerous, given that a Turkish flight came under fire and we are now ensuring that the conditions do exist for safe passage out of Sudan. And that's Defence Minister Anita Anand on the volatile conditions on the ground in Sudan. Earlier today, Global Affairs Canada confirmed two Canadian Air Force's planes are on their way to Sudan, an update that comes after two flights were cancelled earlier today. We know one flight had a mechanical issue that has been fixed. The other one was cancelled due to the shooting of that Turkish evacuation flight. Anand says flights will resume when conditions are safe. Global Affairs Canada also warns that the window to safely extract Canadians out of the country is starting to close. Earlier today, Defence Minister Anand told reporters about 250 Canadians have been evacuated on Allied flights and the two evacuation flights Canada got out yesterday. Global Affairs Canada says there are still about 400 Canadians in Sudan who have requested help getting out. And let's bring in Brigadier, retired Brigadier General Gregory Mitchell. Now he's the former Deputy Force Commander of a 2005 UN mission in Sudan. Good afternoon, uh, General. Thank you so much uh, for being there. You, you've, you've been to, to, to the country, to Sudan. You've lived there, you worked there. Global Affairs Canada says the window to safely get Canadians out of there is starting to close. What do you make of that? Well, obviously, it's a very volatile and dangerous situation um, on the ground. Uh, it's really, given the latest developments of firing on evacuating aircraft, is rather concerning. But um, the fighting is going to be volatile and carry on. It's going to be going on for a long time. So even though the immediate window might be closing, um, it's not going to get any easier. It's not going to open wider in the coming weeks or months. So it's, uh, in my opinion, it's very critical that um, whatever effort is required now, there be some form of push on to get uh, as many Canadians out of there as possible in the very near term. How possible is that? So, so what, what are the biggest challenges, General, right now as you see it? Um, well, Probably a couple. First of all, the uh, the main airport, Khartoum Airport, is not being used because it's been under fire and under attack, been cratered and so forth. So they're using one about 14 kilometers north of Khartoum. It's a uh, normally a Sudanese Air Force base, but right now it's under the control of the Royal Air Force, the United Kingdom Royal Air Force, uh, with the Sudanese agreement. So the actual airport is getting a lot of use, a lot of countries going in and out and getting kind of beat up, but our, our Hercules aircraft, C-130s, are capable of... Uh, of using it it's just that if the uh, if it is coming under fire or the aircraft coming or going or coming under fire that's that's a huge problem the biggest uh, other two problems that i see land evacuation to the nearest uh, port port sudan is well over 800 mm. kilometers it's not an easy drive so uh that's difficult to me the biggest challenge is uh and it's something i really don't know about but where are these canadians that want to be evacuated for them to to say to them oh make your way to the airport or make your way to this assembly area and we'll pick you up there um they're risking life and limb to get to those points so uh i'm not exactly sure what the plan is to uh go in secure escort them to these areas and hopefully that's the role of the 200 or so uh, military people from the third battalion royal canadian regiment and uh, and their additions to uh, to assist in that, because they will be armed and they'll be able to provide uh, self defense for those folks and themselves. From what you understand, is that what those Canadian uh, sol soldiers on the ground are doing? In other words, going to get those Canadians, because as you say, it's too d it, it can be very dangerous to get to where they need to go, uh, for, especially from the capital. I imagine they must be checkpoints, they must be fighting. So are, are they being helped by Canadian forces personnel? 
they could be, they can be. It depends on the specific taskings that the soldiers are being given. Part of it may be security, assisting security of the airfield. Um, it's not all fighters are going to be in that 200. There's going to be uh, health and safety folks. There's going to be uh, others providing other kinds of assistance to global affairs. But there is a certain um, infantry element that... Um, could secure areas, could help uh, and go and evacuate people, depending on the transport available, to get them to the airfield, to get them to the uh, to the port and so forth. And again, uh, without specific information uh, on what their tasking is, which I do not have, uh, I can't honestly say, but um, hopefully that is one of the contingencies that's being developed, because even though it is a definitely a dangerous situation for those trying to do the evacuation. One can only imagine how dangerous it is for the people themselves who are not military yeah. and waiting for somebody to come get them. I'm, I, I don't have much time left, but I, but I want to ask yep. you this. You were a UN military advisor for the ceasefire negotiations in 2004 uh, during the civil war in Sudan. When you're watching this, and, and you know, obviously you know the situation better than most, you know, watching the situation, you know, unfold 20 years later, how, does, how do you feel about that? Um, well, first of all, the one that I was dealing with was the North-South Civil War that had gone on for 20 years. Yeah. And just the fact that it had gone on for 20 years does not bode well for the current conflict because they're not... The two evenly matched sides now are, are not um, different ethnic groups. They're essentially... Um, well, for want of a better word, warlords with uh, with large armies who are battling for control of Sudan, military control and the resources that it holds. So I don't see an early end to this. It's very discouraging to see the poor people, uh, Sudanese people who, like anybody, just wants peace and security and get on with their lives. But they're being overwhelmed after years of civil war, after um, uh, dictatorships for decades, and now military juntas who have promised to take them to dem democratic uh, governments, but that's just not happening. Sad situation. Uh, retired Brigadier General Gregory Mitchell, thanks so much for your time and thanks for explaining this stuff to us. Well, thank you very much for the invitation.